thing. Like, it's not sweet, it's not salty, or sour, bitter. It's umami, you know, like creating that just delicious, savory flavor. Zach Graves always knew he would run his own kitchen. My big thing is I love turning things into sandwiches and burgers that usually aren't. You know, like we've done pad thai burgers, carbonara burgers, lots of just kind of weird playoffs of dishes that are kind of making the sandwiches. <laughs> Brother Bobby and friend Jessica decided to turn an old antique store and farm stand located on Route 4 into a cafe. Zach was on board. Umami being a Japanese name derived word, I try and use a lot of Asian inspired ingredients. The creativity is spelled out on the menu. Serving lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch, Umami's food is an eclectic and unique blend of ingredients, creating mouth-watering burgers and entrees. It's kind of the collaboration of all taste buds coming together and making one flavorful experience, and that's what our goal strive. That's what we strive for in our food. Co-owner Bobby Graves says the restaurant's mission goes beyond farm fresh. The food is local, meats produced by New Hampshire farms, fresh greens, and a green concept as well. I mean, we do our best to locally source everything within season. The restaurant is about 70% solar powered, and Zach's kitchen, not attached to the building, it is this food trailer. They took off the wheels and made it part of the barn, serving the food through an open window to the dining room. You can play foosball while you wait for your meal, or look at the artwork featuring a different local artist every month. Colorful furnishings and tables, much of the wood repurposed after Bobby Graves tore down an adjacent farmhouse. Had materials sitting on the sideline, brought it in, utilized it as we saw fit. There is live music on weekends, but the real star here is the food. I had a tough time figuring out what I wanted for lunch. There are rice bowls. It's uh, pork belly, sweet corn, sweet onion, uh, cabbage, rice obviously, scallions, caramelized carrots, and bean sprouts. It's our umami patty, beef and pork patty, pickled onions, avocado, arugula, and spicy aioli on fresh baked brioche. Too many decisions, I opted for the fries. Oh, these are really good. Yeah, those are spicy fries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. uh, sriracha ketchup, curry aioli. Delicious and fresh meals in an atmosphere that almost feels like the home of an old friend. It's just a huge, huge hit. There's nothing really like it around, so people are kind of congregating. It's enjoyable. this historic 19th century former Baptist church, a restaurant that serves up Irish nachos, salads, and beef chili marinated in Guinness, washed down with a tasty Irish stout. The Holy Grail, um, to a lot of people, is uh, the search for perfection. This is Dave and Maureen Kennedy's second location. The first Holy Grail is located in Epping. Holy Grail of the Lakes is located in the heart of downtown Laconia. It underwent a major renovation to transform the church into a cozy pub, but the Kennedys wanted to remain true to the church's legacy. You could say the former altar has a beautiful mural of what could only be described as God's country. Between the stained glass windows, the tin ceilings, the, the steel walls, um, all the pews were converted into parts of booths for our um, guests to, to enjoy. Uh, the bar that you see behind me here is all set up and built with material from a lot of the pews and a lot of the wood that was harvested from the inside of the building. Under the choir loft, diners can curl up on the couch by a warm fire. Upstairs, there are more private tables adorned with lace tablecloths, just like an Irish kitchen. Maureen Kennedy was born and raised in Ireland. 
I like the fact that I can bring back some of the originality, the, the authentic Irish dishes, the corn, on the, the corn beef and cabbage, the shepherd's pie. Actually, some of it is a little bit of my recipe, the beef stew. Two winter salads with a grilled steak tip and grilled chicken. Uh, most commonly requested item is the Holy Grail Burger and our Guinness Steak Tips, which they're soaked with a Guinness barbecue sauce for three, four days. They get soaked and marinated. And then also the other common item is our boiled dinner that we have, which is nice big chunks of corned beef with cabbage, carrots, and red potatoes. The chefs cooking up a big batch of seafood chowder, generous helpings of Guinness beef stew, even the onion rings are cooked with Guinness. I decided to dip into the Irish nachos. Sliced potato, a little bit of corned beef. It wouldn't be Irish without a little bit of corned beef. Some scallions, some bacon, a little dip. Looks delicious. And it is. For Maureen Kennedy, owning these two Irish eateries is home away from home for her, right down to this little door on the tin ceiling. It's known as a leprechaun door. For me, I love it. I love bringing Ireland to people here in the States who miss it. And there are a ton of Irish and English people that come in and they love the authenticity of it. Everybody's heart and soul, there is, we're all searching for the Holy Grail.